Hi, I'm Lily from the blog Consuming Lily, and today we're going to make spring rolls in honor of Chinese New Year. Um, actually, in Chinese culture, a lot of foods are very, very popular around Chinese New Year because they bring an idea of wealth or luck for the coming year. Uh, spring rolls are one of those things because typically when you deep fry them, they come out golden and then they're long bars. They look like gold bars. Another popular dish is wontons because if you fold them in a certain way, they look actually a lot like gold ingots. Um, oranges, tangerines, all these things symbolize a lot of wealth and luck for the coming year, which is why I've chosen spring rolls today. They're super easy to make at home and, you know, they're delicious and they don't have to be greasy and covered in fat. So today, um, even though you could deep fry them, I'm actually going to make a pan toasted one. And we're going to start here with the ground pork. I have a third of a pound of ground pork. I've added some soy sauce, some Shaoxing wine, which is a Chinese rice wine. Um, and some sesame oil, and I've mixed it together with a little cornstarch to help thicken it and make it a little bit more sticky. Um, so when I saute it, it'll actually retain some of the moisture and actually give it a better texture when you eat it. Um, also here I have two cups of finely shredded cabbage, um, one carrot grated, which I know looks like a very little amount, but when you add it to everything, it'll give it just enough color to make it really pretty, and it doesn't add too, too much flavor because too much carrot can really be overwhelming. And I have, and this is a surprise, very finely julienne broccoli stalks. Um, one of the things that I really want to point out here is the broccoli stalk, generally when you get them in the supermarket, they can be a little tough and woody, which is probably why a lot of people don't eat them. So what I would do is this one, for example, was a pretty young one. You can see that the outside rim is the dry part. So all you do is you cut off the ends and you cut off the crown and take a paring knife and you grab one end and you just peel it back. And you can just do this all the way around and it comes off pretty easily. You don't have to worry about too much, about taking off too much, because actually it only took about three healthy sized stalks to get a cup of the broccoli stalks. So you're in pretty good shape. And actually if you get a good handle on it, it comes off all in one piece. So I just peeled off a bunch of broccoli stalks, ripped off the crowns, and then I finally julienned them. And that's what I have here. What we're going to do now is going to saute the pork. And then once that's done, I'm going to saute the vegetables so that we have all of our filling done. And then we're going to put them in the rolls, roll them up, and then toast them again. So now we're just going to saute off the pork. I have a hot pan here with a little bit of cooking oil. It doesn't really matter what oil you use. Um, I'm using just canola oil here, but I'm sure you could use any pretty flavorless oil. Um, I would avoid olive oil because it imparts a lot of flavor. But it's um, over a high heat, and I'm just going to dump it in. And I'm going to flatten it out. And then while it's cooking, I'm going to break it up as much as possible so that I have small chunks so that every bite that you take from the spring roll doesn't have a huge chunk of pork in it. So the pork is done. I've broken it up into tiny little pieces with the uh, tip of my spatula and I'm just going to take it out, transfer it into a large bowl for the filling. And actually, if you look at the bottom of the pan, there's still a good amount of grease in there from the pork. If there isn't enough, you can add a little more cooking oil. If you want to be a little more health conscious, you can actually wipe it out with a paper towel. Um, this isn't a great deal of, of oil, so I'm going to add a little bit more just before I saute the veggies. It's still over the same heat. I'm going to dump in the cabbage. And the broccoli stems. And the carrots. And I'm just going to slowly saute this until it's just soft so that when it goes into the spring roll, you don't have to cook it too long and it will be pretty much done. So this will take about four to five minutes, depending how big your pan is and how hot your heat is. So just keep tossing it and uh, we'll come back and then roll. So now that the vegetables are nicely softened, I'm just going to add them to the meat mixture. and combine well to make sure that the filling is going to have a bite of everything in every little roll. Okay, so our filling is combined pretty well. And even though there was, you know, a bunch of vegetables and like three cups of veggies, it actually cooked down a lot. And so the proportion of meat to veg is actually a little bit more proportional now that you see it cooked.
So now here I have eight inch spring roll wrappers. They're, they come in a variety of sizes. I find that the eight inch is the most reasonable to work with. Any smaller and you start fumbling. Any bigger and you're making these football sized spring rolls. So I have these and they're under a slightly damp paper towel just to keep them a little dry, uh, wet. And then I've actually had to peel them individually because they come in kind of like a block. So you want to peel them apart one by one really delicately. Make sure they're well defrosted. They typically only come frozen. Um, so you really want to let them defrost properly. Otherwise peeling them apart will be such a pain and you'll rip them and you'll waste half of the package. So here I have one ready to go. And let me just show you the technique here. I'm going to put it on the counter, diamond shape. And I'm going to put a little bit of filling. I said about a quarter cup, a little bit under a quarter cup filling or about three tablespoons. Um, it really depends on what you're comfortable with. Some people like a big, bigger spring roll. I think if they get too big, it becomes really unwieldy. Plus, you know, it's a spring roll. It's not, it's light and springy. So let's not, you know, gorge our guests. So that's about the amount that you're going to use. And just like a burrito, except there's a slight twist. I'm going to lift the corner, tuck it, and pull it back a little bit. And then I'm going to take one corner, and I'm going to fold it over, and then I'm going to roll again. And then I'm going to take the other corner and roll it over. And the reason I did that was because then there wouldn't be all of the skin on one side. This is more evenly distributed. So now when I finish rolling it, you'll see actually that there's an even amount of skin more or less in the whole thing. So it toasts up better and then you're not biting into one super crispy side and one side that has more filling and they're less likely to fall apart because you have one thin tensile skin on one side. So I'm just going to keep making these. This filling, depending on how much you put in, should make about 20 to 25, which is perfect because that's how many wrappers typically come in a spring roll pack. So I'm just going to keep rolling these and uh, then we'll pan fry them. So I've rolled up some spring rolls here and I'm going to pan toast them today so I don't need to close them with a cornstarch slurry. But if you are going to deep fry them, you're really going to want to close them and make sure that they're sealed properly. Otherwise, they'll explode in your oil and it'll make a huge mess. So I have one that's almost done here. I'm just going to take a little bit of the cornstarch, which is, you know, a little bit of water and a little bit of cornstarch. And I'm just going to wet the back of my brush and just brush it over this. And so when I fold and roll one last time, it'll really set. And while you're letting them rest, you should just leave them seam side down. But now that I'm going to pan toast them, I'm actually going to put them straight in the pan, seam side down, right after I brush them with a little bit of oil. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the same cooking oil that I've been using. So I have canola here. You can use corn, you can use vegetable. And I'm going to take a pastry brush and brush them lightly with a little oil. Don't go crazy. And then I'm just going to put them seam side down in the pan, which is over a medium heat right now. You can deep fry them, and actually classically they are deep fried. My mom was always on a diet, and so when I had these at home, they were always kind of just pan toasted. And the skins are actually ready to eat straight out of the package, so you don't really have to do much. All you're doing is really, for this point, toasting it up so it has a nice crisp to it. And I can only fit about four or five in my pan comfortably. So that's all I'm going to do. Just work in small batches, whatever works for your pan. So I'm just going to let these toast up and um, I'll check periodically. They'll start blistering and get nice crackly brown on one side and then I'll flip them over. It's about two to three minutes on each side, depending on how hot your stove is. Mine's over a medium heat and I kind of want to keep it there so it doesn't burn too fast. But um, I'm just going to keep an eye on them and turn them when they're ready. So they're all toasted. They took about two to three minutes on each side and I just have them on the plate to cool a little bit. You don't want to buy them to them right away because they're really, really hot. And actually you'd be surprised how toasty they get. You know, you can hear the sound. That's pretty crunchy. And when you bite into it, it will have that really satisfying crunch. But you know, I didn't use a lot of oil. So these are pretty healthful spring rolls. Um, you can actually serve them with a dipping sauce of your choice. I know a lot of people like the idea of chopped garlic and scallions with a little bit of soy sauce and sugar. That's not that traditional for me and my culture and, and my home culture. Um, actually, it's very odd. Growing up in Hong Kong, dim sum, very popular item spring rolls, and they actually douse it in Worcestershire sauce, which I didn't realize until a couple of days ago how weird that was until I served it to somebody and they're like, why did you do that? So that's totally up to you. You can try it with the Worcestershire sauce. It's a little funky. Um, but, you know, I actually like these just the way they are, and I think they're really delicious. Mm -hmm.